Let's see. It says, notes 25, modeling optimization. We've been talking derivative and finding max and mins. Now it's time for some application. Let's look at a question you had when you were in Algebra 2 and see how you can do this question with Cal. Uh, find two numbers whose sum is 20. Do you guys remember those questions from Algebra? So two numbers whose sum is 20 and whose product is as large as possible. Okay, here's how you would do it in Algebra 2 when you had it. Or maybe Algebra 1. So two numbers whose sum is 20. X plus Y equals 20. And whose product is as large as possible. Okay, so the product, I'm going to say P equals X times Y. Wait, cool. the the, no, the product. I want the product to be the biggest possible. Oh, okay. And this is my restriction. So usually it depends on the textbook, guys, and it depends on the professor. They call this the restrictive equation. We cool or not cool? And so do we understand the question, what it says? So I want these two numbers. I want those two numbers to add up to a what? 20. But I want the same two numbers to be the biggest possible product to be the biggest possible product. So in Algebra 2, here's what you would do. You would take your restrictive equation and you would go y equals 20 minus x. And then from there, you would plug this in right here. So my product equals x times 20 minus x. 20x minus x squared. And then I'm going to plot this into my calculator. Here's how you do it in Algebra 2. And I would go, uh, here's my calculator. Where's my calculator? Right here. I'm going to clear this. And then I would go, what equation did I have? 20x minus x squared? Okay. 20x minus x squared. And I know, okay, before I continue, so I'm going to stop here. I, I should have put it more restrictive, like positive numbers only. I know that my x value has to be between 0 and 20. Chop, how do you know that? Because if x equals 0, my output is 0. And if x equals 20, my output is also 20. 20 times 20 minus 20 squared. Do you guys see that? If you don't see that, it's okay. So look, window, 0 to 20. And output, I'm going to say negative 2 to uh, 150. Because I already know what the answer is for the symmetry. So push graph. Okay. So here are all the possible numbers for x. This is my product, right? So where's my maximum product? Way up here. So when you were in Algebra 2, you just go second, calculate. I want the maximum, so you push number 4. And then you just tell it where to look. Where do I look? Look between here, left bound. And look between there, right bound. If you take a guess by symmetry, yes, that's going to be x equals 10. Uh, so there it is. That 9.9999999999, that's it's 10, guys. Yes. Uh, 0 to 20. x min 0, x max 20. Uh, negative 2 to 150. So there's my maximum product. So I would just go uh, find two numbers whose sum is 20 whose product is as large as possible. So what are those two numbers? x equals 20. x equals 20. x equals 10. y equals 10. All right. How do you do this with calculus? It's simple, guys. This is what I want to maximize. I'll slow down because I want to make sure that you, that you hear what I'm saying. The product is what I want to maximize, yes? So that is what you take a derivative of. So write that down, guys. The product is what you want to maximize. So that is what I take a derivative of. Does that make sense? So check it out. Without Algebra 2. <laughs> All right, so because we want to, what's up, what's up? What did it say, uh, error non-dimensional or? Yeah, let me look at it.
All right, guys. So that was the with algebra. Here it is with calculus. So the whole point of max and mins uh, with, that we did with calculus is because if we want to find the maximum product, we take a derivative of that and equal it to zero to find your critical number. So check it out. So p prime equals the derivative of 20x is 20. The derivative of x squared is 2x. Equal it to zero. And then you can just go 20 equals 2x divided by 2. Both sides, x equals 10. See? If you do a p prime graph, a p prime analysis, it actually, uh, well, that's fine. 10, and there it is. So if I do a p prime, if I plug in uh, a 9 or an 8, it doesn't really matter, a 0, I get 20, so that's plus. That's a plus symbol, not a, came out kind of squeaky there. If I plug in something like a 12 or a 13, 2 times 12 is 24, 20 minus 24 is a negative, that's a minus. That's the only time on your p prime graph that it goes from positive to negative, the only time. So that means that x equals 10 must be a max. Does that make sense? Or no? Yeah, and if you know what x is, you know what y is, because 20 minus 10 is 10. Yeah, it's your y value. Yes, with algebra. Does that make sense, guys? You could have probably, you could have probably gone away with saying that I know that this derivative is a max at 10 because this is a parabola opening downward. Does that make sense? So the only time, so let's look at this graph real quick. Focus, focus. So the only time you have a horizontal tangent on this graph is when you have a max. And you know it's a max and not a min because it's a parabola opening downward. Cool or not cool? That's not enough justification. What was the perfect justification? You would say pre prime changes from positive to negative at x equals 10. Hence, p is a maximum at x equals 10. That's what I wanted, a maximum product, right? A maximum p. So there, that's it, that's it. you're done. Does that make sense, guys? All right, so let's see. The hardest part of this is creating a model. So here's the question that turns hard. Example. A rectangle is to be inscribed under an arc of the sine curve. What is the largest area of the rectangle can have and what dimensions give that area? Here we go, guys. I need your A game for this. Do you know how a sine curve looks like? It, 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 you know, yeah. It goes right through the origin. So here is my sine curve. And it goes all the way like this. And what is this coordinate? That's x equals what? Not 1. Hi. Are we okay? I have a rectangle under this sine curve. It's symmetric right about right from them from there. And here is my rectangle. It doesn't have to look like that, guys. It can look like this. Do we understand what we what we're dealing with? So uh, in case you're you're not following along, guys, I can draw a rectangle of any width and height as long as it's inscribed inside the sine curve. Yes or no? They want to know what is the largest area rectangle I can have. Well, I can either make a skinny rectangle but tall, or I can make a fat rectangle but short. And one of those, somewhere in the middle, I have the biggest possible rectangle I can have. Yes or no? All right, here's what you're going to do. I need a model. What type of model? A model to dictate how this area of this rectangle. Yes or no? All right, so look at the blue one. Look at the blue rectangle. So do you agree the distance between here and that blue line, or I should put a blue there, the distance between x equals 0 and that, that is just some x value. All right, so I'm going to put x. Because this is symmetric, this distance here between that and that is also x, the distance. I'm talking about distance. Also x. Yes or no? OK, now look at where the height is located. The height is located right on that curve. Don't I know that that curve is just dictated by y equals sine x? So I can just say that this is nothing more than just a y value. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. This curve is y equals sine x, right? 
So isn't this vertical distance just some y value, which is dictated by sine x? So here's my area for the rectangle, and I'll put I'll put here for good notes, area of rectangle. So area of rectangle is equal to uh, some y value times. Let's see, what is the what is this length? Um, sine x minus two x. Does that make sense? No, no, that does not make sense. Uh, pi minus two x. There we go. Now we're right. Did I lose you? No, so I lost someone. Look, this this in black is x, right? This in black is x. The distance from the origin all the way to here, that distance is pi. So if I want to know the distance of this in green, this right here in green, it's just pi minus 2x. Do you see how I did that? Okay. And I know what y is. y is just the height of that sine curve, right? So if I want to have it all in terms of x, here it is. My area is sine x times pi minus 2x. Does that make sense to you guys? All right. Here's my restriction. X, and I'll, I'm going to go back to red. X has to be between 0 and pi over 2. Oh. Because here's pi over 2 right here. Okay. Right? Yeah. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, th this, it's, it's hard, guys. The model, getting the model is hard. Because of this, I know that area of 0 is 0 and area of pi over 2 is 0. Chavez, how do you know that so fast? If I'm at 0, I have no rectangle if x is 0. And if x is pi over 2, you have a, just like a, a, a line, a vertical line. So you have no rectangle again if, you're, if you max out to pi over 2. Does that make sense? Okay. Are we, are we still okay? Ask, ask. Tell me. Demon. Yeah, like let's say let's say I'm really close to half a pi. If I'm exactly at pi over two, all I have is this is this black line right here, and so you have no rectangle because you're right on it. You know what I mean? Okay, here we go, guys. This is what I want to find the max. That is what I'm uh, what I'm going to take a what derivative because of this. I already know whatever critical number I have is a max because of my two extremes at zero. So whatever critical number I get, I already know it's a max. So here we go. Uh, what rule do we want to use? Uh, product rule? A prime. A prime of x equals first times greater than the second, negative 2, plus second, pi minus 2x times greater than the first, cosine x. As a matter of fact, uh, this one, you have to use a calculator. So I wouldn't even bother. You know what? You don't even have to bother with that. I would just do everything with a calculator. I would just do everything with a calculator. I wouldn't even bother. Ready? Here's what I would do, guys. Second quit, and everyone follow along. Use your calculator because you're going to need your calculator skills. Uh, y equals, and I would just type the area formula, which is sine x pi minus 2x. So sine x, close parenthesis, Second pi minus 2x. Okay, don't push graph on that. I'm going to turn off that y1. Turn it off. Boom. Enter. All right, on y2, scroll to y2. You just push enter on the equal sign. Did it work? Okay. On y2, <coughs> as soon as you type, the equal sign will light up. I'm going to put derivative. Math number 8 put an X on it, and then put Y1. Alpha trace Y1 at X equals X. So let me know till you get here. Let me make sure that it says, and make sure that Y2 is the one that says the equal sign. Are we okay so far, guys? Okay, don't push graph, not yet. Okay, I'm waiting. Alpha trace. And then you see it? Okay. Yep. 
go to window, push X min zero, X max, uh, power over two. And then you just care about where you cross the X axis. So I'm gonna go negative one Y min to one Y max. So here we go, push graph. Bless you, there's my answer. Uh, zero to pi over two, y max x max pi over two, and then y min negative one, y max one, and then push graph. This is a derivative graph. Mine goes fast because it's a computer. Yours might go a little fast because it's a it's a calculator. Uh, but it'll do it eventually. It'll, it'll do it within a reasonable time. I shouldn't take forever though. If it takes forever, let me know. I need to find that intersection. This is my derivative curve. It is going from positive to negative, so I know that's definitely a max, right? Second, calculate number two, and then left bound, I go to the left of it, enter. Right bound, I go to the right of it, enter. Guess, nope. Does everyone get 0 0.7104628? Okay. Yes, I will do it again. Second, calculate number two. And then it says left bound, so I go to the left, enter. Right bound, I go to the right, enter. Guess, note, 0.7104628. Yeah. Second, calculate number two. And then left bound, go to the left of that, enter. Right bound, go to the right of that, push enter. And then just push enter again. Got it? All right, there it is. You found the dimensions. So hold on, don't, don't wait, hold your horses. Hold your horses. <laughs> All right, what was the X value? Six, two, eight. Okay, that is not a dimension. That is just the X value of how far you are from the origin. That is that X value. So if I want my dimensions, I gotta go pi minus 2x, do you guys see that? And then sine of x, that's my height, and then pi minus 2x is my width. So here it is, so I'm gonna go height equals sine of 0.7104628. Guys, use the calculator, be smart, look. Here's my calculator, I'm gonna go to my home screen, and look, if I push x, there it is, that's that value, right? I'm going to store it to A. You don't, you don't ever want to use X because X is always being changed. So now that I put it to A, A is always that unless I change it. Have I lost anyone? Push the stow button right next to the number one and then put A. So make sure it says A and S to A. And now look, I just push sign of alpha A. It's, it's going to stay in A forever until I change it again. That is my height. 0.652184. So I'm going to say height is 0 0.6. I already forgot. 0 0.652184. 0 0.652184. Okay. What is my width? The width is pi minus 2x. So, and I don't know why it's writing like that, guys. Pi. There we go. Minus 2x. I'm going to need a new laptop pretty soon. All right, pi minus 2x. So I'm going to go pi minus 2 alpha a. Enter. 1.720667. One point, we don't want to use the devil's number. 1.720667. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but when I give you guys delta math, I never give you six six and then another six it's always six six five or six six seven or because i don't want to use the the devil's number you know i want to go to heaven yeah all right there it is this is my width this is my height you're done and then if they, if they want area just multiply these two numbers or just plug it in in here the x value it doesn't matter they're all going to give the same value so what is my area uh, maximum area is this number times this number 
There it is, 1.1222. I'm going to write it somewhere here. Max area, 1 point, 1 point, and I already forgot it. 1222. Two, two. One, so two. How do we feel? Yeah, the modeling is what's hard, guys. No, uh, if they don't give you units, no units. Okay, so he, I got good news and I got bad news. Which one do you want to hear first? Okay, the bad news. We are going to have to come up with the models for now. Only because we need to make things hard. Do you guys want to hear the good news? On your exam, the model is going to be given to you. So you're lucky. All right, so business question. Because you want a profit, right? So here it is. Can you give me a model for the volume of this box? So can you guys see? Here's my sheet. I hope I'm saying it right. Not the sheet. Not uh, the, your teen sheet. Okay, I got to be careful. Um, so what are the dimensions of this, guys? Look, by the way, a, a double quote means inches. So that's 20 inches by 25 inches. And if you fold all these, uh, what do you call those dashed lines there where the X's are at? If you fold all of those, you get this box. Yay or nay? All right. Volume of the box. Volume equals, let's see, X times 20 minus 2X times 25 minus 2X. Is everyone okay with that right there? Yes. From right, uh, okay, the 2X come from, you see this distance from, okay, look, uh, I, I should have aimed at this first. You see how this from way here to way there is 20? But when this folds up, this distance here is an X. See, and this distance here is an X. So from here to here, that gap or that distance, that's 20 minus 2X. And then this distance here, from way over here to way over here, that's 25 inches. Don't worry, I see you, miss. So when I fold this up and I fold this up, this distance here, that is 25 minus 2x. Cool? All right, what's the question? Oh, because uh, that's volume. Uh, it's 25 minus 2x times 20 minus 2x will give me the, the area of the base. And then to add that third dimension, times x will give me how much volume this holds. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? No, that's a good question. By the way, the restriction. Here's my restriction. X has to be between what and what? Look at the most restrictive one. It looks like it's this one. X has to be between 0 and 10. I know that if my volume, if a volume if X is 0 is 0, my volume if X is 10 is 0. So I know and cubic units, but there are no units here. Oh, actually, uh, actually there are units. Uh, cubic inches. I know that if I get one critical point, that's going to have to be my max. Yay or nay? All right, here we go. I'm going to take a derivative. You could, if you wanted, take a derivative right here doing a triple product rule. Uh, we haven't had much experience with that. I don't know. Maybe we have. Maybe we haven't. It's the same. It's like grouping this and grouping this and saying first times root of the second plus second times root of the first. And when you do the derivative of the first, you do another product, a product within a product, if that makes sense. You could do that, but I think that takes longer. Or you could just expand and then take a derivative because it looks like I'm just going to get a polynomial. Does that make sense to you guys? All right, so here we go. All I'm, I'm not doing anything yet, guys. X times, what is 20 times 25? I want to say that's 400. If I have 20 quarters, is it 500? 20 quarters is $5? Okay, I was wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if, I don't know why I didn't think of that. You're so smart, Ms. Abdukareem. All right, so there it is. 20 times 25 is 500. 20 times 2x is negative 40x, and then 25 times 2 is negative 50x, so that looks like negative 90x. Are we okay so far? And then negative 2x times negative 2x, that's going to be a positive 4x squared. And now I'm going to distribute this x, but I'm going to write the highest degree first this time instead of having it the other way around. 
So volume in terms of x is equal to 4x cubed minus 90x squared uh, plus 500x. Have we done anything crazy, guys? No. Here we go. I want This is what I want to maximize. This is what I'm going to take a what? Derivative. V prime of x is equal to 12x squared minus 180x plus 500. Uh, looks like I can factor out a 0. I mean a 0. A 2. Man, what's wrong with me? Uh, let's see. What else does factor out? You know what? I'm not even going to bother. Yeah, we can figure out the greatest common factor. I have a calculator, so that's what we're going to use. Um, there's two ways to do it. We did it right now a little while ago by finding where you cross the x-axis. Do you want me to do it with quadratic formula now? Okay. x equals 180 plus minus square root negative 180 squared minus 4 times 12 times 500 all over 2 times 12. Does everyone know what I'm doing? Yes. Put a side note and put x equals negative b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Take your calculator. I'm going to show you everything. I'm going to clear this so you guys can see everything. I'm going to push alpha y equals so there are no mistakes. And I'm going to put, I already forgot, short term memory. Was it 180? 180 plus square root, put parenthesis, negative 180 if you want to be technical. Uh, you can just put 180 squared because negative times the negative is a positive anyways. Minus 4 times, was it 12? What was A? 12. And then what was C? 500? And then all over 2 times 12, right? Okay, so there it is with the plus 11.3188, which obviously we can't be, but maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. 11.3188. And then now let's do the minus. So I just scroll up. And instead of a plus, I, I push a what? Yeah, so just scroll, scroll, scroll until you get there and push minus. Get on top of the sign and push minus. 3.6811 or 12 if you round it. 3.6812. 3.6812. One of those twos is my answers. Which one? Yeah. This is your answer. Let me tell you why. That 11.3188 is outside domain of x. Remember your restriction, guys. Yes. Through this, 20 minus 2x and 25 minus 2x, the one that gave me the smaller x value. See how you can't have negative dimensions. So if x equals 10, you don't have a box. 2 times 10 is 20. You know what I mean? All right. I need the dimensions, so I'm going to put dimensions. I'm going to say height equals 3.6812 inches. And I'm going to say width. I don't know what you guys consider width. You guys consider this the width or this the width? It doesn't matter. The 20 minus 2x? Okay. So go to your calculator. And I would store that to A. I always go down the alphabet. Store alpha A. So here we go. 20 minus 2 alpha A. Enter. Width is 12.638 inches. And then length is 25 minus 2A. 25 minus 2A. Enter. 17.638. 17.638 inches. And then the volume, max, and then we'll check it with algebra to see if it's true. Max volume is, so 
So I'm just going to multiply those three numbers together. So I'm going to use the calculator numbers so there's no uh, error or a, a small amount of error, if any. So I'm going to scroll up. Enter times this next one. Enter times uh, is it that one? Yeah. 820.528. Next volume is 820.528, and then put units if possible. What do I say? How do I say it? Cubic inches, but you write it inches cube, but you say cubic inches. If this is true, look guys, we did this with calculus, right? If I type, how did you do it when you were in Algebra 1? You just type this into your calculator, and you just look for the peak. Right? So let's see if it's true. So x 20. So I go to my y equals. And I'm going to clear both. Clear, clear. And I'm not going to do enter the derivative or anything. I'm just going to enter my volume. x times uh, 20 minus 2x times 25 minus 2x. And then here's, I already know what my answer is. So um, uh, 25 minus 2x. 2x. There we go. I already know what my answer is. What was my x value? I already forgot it. What was my height? Okay, so I'm going to go all the way to 9 or 10. x min 0, x max 10, and then y min negative 1. That's fine. y max, it goes all the way to 800 or 900 or whatever. So I'm make it 1,000. And then y scale, make it 100 so it doesn't, you don't have a whole bunch of little sticks. Grab. So check it out. If I find the max, it's going to be that exact number. Second, calculate number four, maximum. And then left bound, come on, buddy, hurry up. Enter. Right bound, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Enter. Guess, nope. And look at that, guys. 3.68118, 820.52819. What's up? What was my what? I did. I did. I just uh, 0 to 10, negative 1 to 1,000. So why? I already knew the answer, though. That's why I was able to change my window so fast. Say the, say the question, uh, Alvarez. Yeah, let me see. All right, have we done too much? You guys think we can take some more? Yeah, we. I feel like we, we are just at the, we better stop right here. Uh, so we've done three examples, all of them with restriction. Tomorrow we'll continue with example four, the dunning a can. Uh, this is actually a true business question, guys. You have been asked to design a one liter oil can shape like a right circular cylinder. What dimensions will use the least material? Guys, where do you think all these shapes come from? They want to use the least amount of material that will fit. Lately, they've been making them smaller and smaller, though, uh, and charging you the same price, right? So they're profiting more. But yeah, they notice that when they when okay, have you noticed with the water bottles that say new slim design? Let's see if this one fits. Uh, well, those darker ones say, look, bottle made with twenty percent less plastic. So they made a new design, and now this design takes 20% less plastic, but yet still has 500 ml. Do you think they're doing that to be green? No. No, I think they're doing it to make more money. <laughs> but because they, yeah, they use, they use less plastic, yeah, technically yeah. they're more green. But I think they're doing that. Bottle made with 20% less oil. Maybe not this one, but you know what I mean. All, every time you see a bottle that says now less, less plastic, they're doing it so they can make more money, right? And this is calculus in the making. You know, make the bottle smaller, but still hold the same volume. Isn't that cool?
So, I mean, that's why the shape of Cokes are the way they are, guys. All right. We have a handout. The handout is uh, maybe the first one is hard, but don't do the hard one. Do the easier ones, which the ones that, what, Chavez, which one are the easier ones? Something like this. Something like this is easy because you can already see visually what the model is. Does that make sense? So, you have been asked to design. So, on this one, we want to design a one liter oil can shaped like a right circular cylinder. And then what dimensions will use the least material? So, we want to use the least material. So, let's talk about a right circular cylinder. So, here's a right circular cylinder here. So, first, how do we get volume of that? Well, volume is dependent on this circle down here, and then when you add the third dimension, uh, times this height. So my volume is equal to pi r squared, and then uh, times my height, and that will give me that uh, cubic, uh, the, the, the volume. That will give me volume. That will give me the cubic centimeters or whatnot. Uh, so there it is. Uh, so next, uh, we've got to know, guys, that one liter of oil is equal to 1,000... Uh, milliliters, which means that this is going to take up 1,000 cubic centimeters. So we got to know that much. So we can use that as a restriction of equation and say 1,000 cubic centimeters is equal to pi r squared h. And then next, so I want to use the least amount of surface area, so I got a top and a bottom. So I'm going to say my area is equal to pi r squared, but you have two of them. Plus, and then this rectangle or the sidewall, the sidewall here uh, would be the circumference of this times height. So the circumference is 2 pi r, 2 pi r times height. There it is. So I'm going to take the derivative of, of, I'm going to take the derivative of area, but I don't want to take the derivative in terms of r and h. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my restrictive equation to solve for h. So I'm just going to divide this 1,000 cubic centimeters. So I'm going to say 1,000 divided by pi r squared is equal to h. So there it is. That's what I'm going to substitute. Area equals 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r parenthesis 1,000 divided by pi r squared. Close it. The pi's cancel out. The r's cancel out. And there it is. So here's my general expression for area. 2 pi r squared plus 2,000 over r. So that's what I'm going to take a derivative of. And I have no restriction for R because I can use as much as I want. So I'm going to have to take a second derivative to prove that it is concave down. Uh, or, I'm sorry, concave up uh, so that I know that this is definitely a minimum. Uh, so here we go. So A prime equals 4 pi R minus 2,000 over R squared. Uh, in case you're wondering how we did it so fast, guys, that is 2,000 R to the negative 1. So it's easy to just do a power rule really fast. Uh, we're going to set that equal to zero, so that's what I want. I want the critical number where this happens. Uh, so I have 4 pi r equals 2,000 over r squared. Multiply both sides by r squared, so you're going to have 4 pi r cubed over 2,000. Divide by 4 pi. Divide by 4 pi. So you have r cubed equals 500 over pi. And then just take the cube root of that. So r equals cube root. The cube root of 500 over pi. And then we're going to prove that that definitely, oh, by the way, that number is, we did this earlier, but we'll do it again real quick. Um, math number four, uh, 500 divided by pi. And there it is, 5.41926. R equals 5.41926. I'm going to store that to A because we're going to use it later on. Store alpha A. And then from there, let's see. I'm going to prove that this is uh, a minimum, guys. And I do that by taking the second derivative. So let's see, 4 pi. I'm taking the derivative with respect to R. Plus 2 times 2,000 to 4,000. 4,000 over r cubed. This will always be positive. So I'm going to write, since a prime prime is greater than 0 and a prime equals 0, comma, r equals the cube root of 500 over pi must be a minimum. 
Hopefully that made sense to my YouTube audience. I don't know how many people are watching, maybe one or two of you. Uh, so yeah, by the way, my kids right now are working in silence. They're uh, working on their UH quizzes, I think, hopefully. Okay, uh, so here we go. Uh, so now next, if I already know that this gives you my minimum, I want to figure out what the height is. No big deal. Here it is. So I'm just going to go height must be a 1000 divided by pi times uh, r squared. So that 5.41926 squared. And let's see what that gives us. Divided by... I already forgot short to memory pi times that pi times did I say that to a I did so alpha a squared and there it is 10.8385 and these are all centimeters by the way centimeters 10.8385 8385 centimeters and there it is guys so this will give you the least amount of surface all right, uh, let's continue. All right, on this question here, guys, it says find the coordinates of the points on the curve right equals square root of x plus 4 that are close to the point seven zero. All right, so this curve looks like this. And 0.70, it's not, it's not drawn to scale, but 70 is like right there, guys. So we want to know, yes. Um, I got email from Mr. Oh, well, be, yeah, be, be nice. Okay, so the distance from 70 to that curve is, so I want this distance, but I want the shortest distance. So it could be any one of these points. So which one of those points? An infinite amount of points, right? I want to know which one of these, or which line, is the shortest line. So let's see. Let's figure that out. We know the distance formula. Distance formula is this. Change in x squared plus change in y squared. All right. Because we're going to take a derivative, guys, I don't want to do chain rule. It's going to really make things hard if we have that square root. Uh, remember, all we're doing is finding the shortest. So if I, if you're wondering, like Chav, why are you removing the square root? Well, if I ask you what's smaller, square root of 81 or square root of 82, you're going to tell me square root of 81 is smaller. If I remove the square root and I say what's a smaller number, 81 or 82, you're going to tell me 81 is smaller. So you see, it doesn't really change whether I have the square root or not. So I'm asking for the smallest distance or the point that's closest to seven zero. So I'm just going to get rid of the square root guys. So, and all these points are characterized by X comma square root of X plus four. So here we go. I'm going to write D equals square root. And in a, little, in a moment, I'll take out the square root. I'm going to go seven minus X, close it squared plus, let's see, uh, that's coordinate seven zero. So 0 minus square root of x plus 4, close it squared. And remember, this is your y value, guys, and y is dictated by this value. Uh, so there it is. Get rid of the square. And then I have 7 minus x, close it squared, plus squared. And notice all I did was get rid of the square root. And now I'm going to square it, guys. So now, oh, yeah. So now I have, let's see, 49 minus 14x plus x squared, and then get rid of the square root here, so plus x plus 4. We can just drop the parentheses, drop it like a tot. Uh, so we drop them, and we're going to have x squared minus 13x plus 53. And there it is. I'm going to take a derivative of that. So d prime equals 2x minus 13 equals 0. And I just solve for x. So 2x equals 13. x equals 13 over 2. And I know you might be tempted to just go right here and just immediately circle that 13 over 2. But verify that that's your y value, guys. So how do you do that? Just plug in that 13 over 2 into the square root of x plus 4. So go y equals square root 13 over 2 plus 4. That 4 is going to turn to 8 
13 over 2 plus 8 over 2. And now we have 13 plus 8, which is 21. So 21 over 2. So this breaks down to square root of 21 over square root of 2. And then you're probably thinking, well, that's not that. But it is. It is. And, uh, you know, I have some of my kids listening, and they're probably saying that I'm talking to myself. But I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking to the laptop. Uh, so square root of 42 over 2. And then I look for that. And there it is. It's right there. All right. So there it is. I hope this rendition was better than the last rendition because the last one was filled with errors all over the place. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully you guys are happy. And I'll uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye.